My name is Logan Brown, and this is Three Words. It's a bite-sized podcast about the simple choices that you can make to be fully alive and just live a life that's a little bit better. Um, Today, I am hosting this episode. I kicked my dad out, and I'm actually having a conversation with my brother, Justin, Dr. Justin Brown, and we're just talking about cell phones and screen time and social media and stuff like that. Um, I think it's a really cool episode because we kind of unpack the idea of about just how screens aren't always there for you. They're not always made to help you live the best life. And just kind of, we just have a super casual conversation about the ways that we've been trying to reduce screen time in our lives and how it's been a really positive change. All right, listen in. Justin Brown, Dr. Justin Brown, how's it going? It's going well. How are you, brother? Oh, I'm good, brother. (laughs) Welcome to the show. I am so excited to finally be hosting feel Congrats. like I've been waiting for this moment forever. It's a huge moment for you. I know. And it probably feels good for you to finally be, you know, just with, I feel like I have to be a much better host than dad. For sure. I, I can't believe he didn't invite me to host first, but yeah, I know. I know. But like, here's the thing. We <laughs> wanted to do this one just cause we thought we'd have a good conversation. Yeah. But two, we're also trying to think of creative ways to f- kind of slowly phase dad out there we of go. just DMB coaching. The he podcast. wants us to take over someday. He does. And this is, this is the time. So we're not <laughs> hoping something happens to him. We're not expecting, but like, we're just preparing, yeah. you know, and we want our audience to be, yeah. get used to hearing some other voices. So proactivity. anyway, productivity, exactly. So <laughs> proactivity, <laughs> wait, what did you say? Proactivity. Proact. I don't Let's just keep going. All right. Um, so today we're talking <laughs> about reduced screen time. Right? That's right. Okay. So first I just want to, let's define what screen time is for you. Sure. I think when I think about reduce screen time, I am referring mostly to looking at my phone, but also even to being on my laptop or watching TV. But I, I think most of this conversation will probably resolve around revolve around social media and particularly not just social media when I'm supposed to be working, but more like social media when I'm in the presence of others. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Let's just uh, go straight into it. Let's do it. Time. Why should we be reducing it? Yeah. And and I think, you know, as I think about this conversation, I knew that I wanted to have this conversation with you because um, I feel like you do a good job of like, I remember growing up, you were the Instagram guy. You had this big Instagram account. You're posting all these photographs and you'd even talk to me about, I feel nervous. Like what happens when Instagram changes their algorithm and that'll change how my business works and Mm -hmm. things. But I feel like I do not often see you on your phone. I don't often see you on social media that when I'm with you, that you feel like you're engaged with me and present with me. And even when I text you after hours, I'll get a thing that says, Logan's not getting notifications right now. And I'm like, wow, Logan must do this screen time thing pretty well. I think he protects that. He guards his evening time with his wife and and such on. So I I think that I just wanted to talk to you about that. So I think why it's important to me is that I I want to be present where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that that screen time causes me to not be present where I'm at at times. I think it does reduce my productivity. I think that it can lead me to feel um, frustrated. It can leave me feeling lonely at times. Um, I think that I want to more focus on what are the ways that that not hear the principles about why everyone should reduce their screen time. But what, have, what have I noticed for me mm-hmm. that when I'm on my phone a lot, when I'm looking at social media a lot, what does that do in my heart and in my mind? Um, and what does it look like to reduce that for the, for the benefit of some of those things? For sure. For sure. So here's the thing that's tough when we talk about screen time. Sure. I sometimes like love screen time. Yeah. Screen time sometimes like the best, like there's nothing better to me than like watching like a really good show yeah. late at night or like, I don't know, like sometimes it's just amazing just to like, after like a long day at work or if you're just like relaxing, you got a night alone, just like scroll on some TikTok, throw on some cool YouTube videos, sure. you know? So I guess like, where do you draw that boundary of what is, when is screen time like too much? I think screen time is too much when it, doesn't contribute to us achieving our most important goals in life. And that doesn't always have to be the productivity kind of goals, but when it comes to the relational goals. So Mm -hmm. for me, when I think about, you know, even, um, I, I think that when I am by myself and when I'm scrolling on my phone, sometimes I can end up scrolling on my phone for a lot longer than I intended. Um, and I think that there are times where I recently did a whole month on night shift and I was kind of at the hospital and more of an as needed kind of basis. And there were nights where I would read an entire book 
And there were other nights where it was like, I think I scrolled on my phone for four hours. And it was the nights that I scrolled on my phone for four hours that I felt more lonely. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if that's so much like I'm, I wasn't like playing the comparison game. I'm not like jealous of people's lives on Instagram, but it was more so like that. I feel like I cannot reclaim that four hours that I just lost this whole night from. And it makes me feel lonely. I think even there, Noelle right now, she works every other weekend. And I, now that I'm a second year resident, I have most of my weekends off. So on those weekends days where she's gone all day, it's the days when I'm out and about. It's the days when I'm engaging with people. It's the days when I'm volunteering, when I'm doing things, when I'm, I'm working on stuff in the garden or or things like that, that I feel most alive. Mm -hmm. And it is the days where I can't pull myself away from the screen that I feel the least alive. And then I feel like, gosh, I really miss my wife. I really am sad about this day. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that's how I think about that. Yeah, for sure. I feel like I totally agree with you there. Like that's one of the reasons I think I try to just like limit my screen time Yeah, is one, it can just like suck you in. There's been nights where I've like had the night alone and I'm like, I'm like, you know what? It's like, I just got done with dinner. I'm just going to scroll for a bit and I'm scrolling and I look up and it's like dark and I'm like, Oh my God, what happens? Where Where did my night go? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think like at the root of it all, I just want to like, I never remember those nights that I'm scrolling on my phone, Mm -hmm. you know? And like, I think it feels good for a little bit. And then at some point it's just like, it doesn't even feel good anymore. And you're just kind of stuck. Yeah. Um, and I just want to live a life of like doing a lot of stuff and like making memories. And I think it's like, it's tough though. Cause you just have to like make that choice and like, if you're not, I think if you're not proactive about trying to avoid that screen, it's going to suck you in. Cause it's like really good. It's automatic. It. Yeah. yeah. And I think about how many times we just pick up our phones and without even knowing it, we'll click on the Instagram or Facebook sure. or TikTok apps yeah. with, and you're like, wait, how did I get here? Oh, I was supposed to look something up on Google for this assignment that I was working and for suddenly sure. you're in it. Um, and one of the things that I have tried to do, which is kind of, I think unique is that every like week or so I'll change where the social media apps are on my phone. Mm. Like I'll, I'll hide them okay. into folders and you know how yeah, yeah. on your iPhone oh, yeah. there's like different kind of pockets of things. You, yeah. I'll put them in the wrong category and like I'll move things around so that whenever I pick up my phone and I would naturally just click on Instagram without thinking about it, yeah. without intention, just on accident I'm on Instagram. I'm like, wait, where did I put that again? And then I think to myself, wait, why am I, why am I pulling up my phone again? And it reminds me of, oh, I can't do this automatically anymore. So then it forces me to be thoughtful about what am I about to do? And is there a good reason I'm doing this? And and I actually, am I missing out on family and friend or coworker time because of the fact that I pulled out Instagram completely on accident? For sure. That's actually one of the reasons that I got an Apple watch. Yeah. Listen, I know it's a screen, okay, but it is a smaller screen. Sure. So that's got to count for something. Does but it make also, a difference? I mean, it does to me because like there's a lot less you can do on the Apple Watch. So a lot mm. of times, like I would pull out you my phone. You can't be on Facebook. No. You can get a notification. Maybe. You get a notification. You can check the notification, and mm. then if you want to like do more with that notification, mm. you got to pull out your phone. I see. Of. So I got the Apple Watch, and I really like it um, because I feel like I just quickly know if this notification is important or not, mm. and then I can just shut it. But with my phone, if I had to like get a vibrate, I'd check it and I'd like, if I go to clear the notifications, hmm. like you said, next thing I know, I'm like on Instagram or on TikTok sure. and it's just like, it can suck you in. So yeah, yeah. that's been like a good thing for me at least. Makes sense. Yeah. I think for me, something else too that I have tried to work on is that I never want to be on my phone when I'm in the presence of other people. Yeah. That if I am, you know, even if I am, you know, at a coffee shop with my wife and like, we're waiting on the food or something like we can engage in a conversation there. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think sometimes we struggle to just be present in the moment and not only in the presence of people, but when we're by ourselves, I think we don't like the quiet Mm -hmm. as, as human beings. We don't know how to do nothing. Um, and I read a book recently called how to do nothing, resisting the attention economy. And this, it was this whole idea of, of that we just don't know how to do nothing and that there's something so beautiful about doing nothing that allows you to be more aware of the world that you're in and open your eyes to what's going on around you and to appreciate nature and to appreciate your place in the world, your context to look around and be like, wow, the sky is so blue today. Mm-hmm. Or I've never really heard those particular bird and we can pay attention to the things around us when, you know, it's easy when, you know, you're out to dinner with someone and they go to the bathroom and you're like, oh, well, I'll just hop on my phone while they're in the bathroom. Yeah. Like, what else do you do? For sure. Um, but what does it look like to just sit there, 
to look around, look to at the think, sky. To, I, I think that when we're on social media, it yeah. reduces our ability to engage in restful activity as well as reflective activities and rhythms. Yeah. And like social media, it might feel like rest, but it's not actually rest because yeah. your brain's probably working. Sometimes a lot it doesn't, yeah. it, it is, it sometimes doesn't deliver on what we feel like it's going to deliver on. For, for me, I think that that's my experience. For sure. So I know you're like not saying it's about like how many hours you spend sure. or something like that, but I thought it'd be fun to both check our screen time live on oh, the show okay. and uh, Who's just got see it? who has the highest screen the most? time. So I think you can just search screen time. So screen time. Daily average. Okay. I got mine pulled up. What are you at? It's loading. All right. It's th- uh, for me, it's three hours and five minutes. Oh, are you way Two worse? Hours oh shoot! Twenty-one. So here's minutes. the thing, though. Okay, so here's the thing. You're gonna make some excuses. What are you? Gonna I'm say? gonna make a couple excuses. Is this Google Maps. Because I think that they matter. So is this I, the calculator app. Like, uh, what are I don't use the maps a lot, okay. but I listen to podcasts almost every day on my way to work. Okay. Um, I don't know if you do the same. Your okay. commute's a little longer than mine, but I I listen to podcasts. I'll sometimes listen to like um, late night mm-hmm. uh, comedy yeah. news stuff on my way to work, um, and that's a part of how I use my phone. But I also, mm-hmm. I mean, my pager is on my phone as a medical professional. There are other things, but a pager is on your phone. It is. Yeah. I get pages, um, to my phone, mostly when I'm at work, um, that are about, can you put in this order for this patient? They can't just like text you. They have to page um, you. I guess, I guess iPhone? not. And that's it's a, wild. it's a really loud ring too. that. It, it really, it wakes you up. And stuff. can I get your pager and like page um, you at you, times? I don't think you can shoot, but that would, that be, would be awesome. <laughs> That'd be great. So, um, I'm not trying to justify my screen time. For sure. Yeah. It sounds like it, but I, I think another thing too, is that even when I think about my drives, like we're talking about commutes, I think that sometimes it's really healthy to just sit in silence in the car. Yeah. You know, sometimes I feel like we are so go, go, go. And then I'm like, all right, I'm in the car. Now I'm going to listen to my podcast and I, I'll get home from work and I'll still feel kind of like I didn't actually unwind before I get home. For sure. And then I'm engaging um, in meaningful connection with my wife. Um, and I think that, that sometimes it's like, what if we, we know it would be the healthier thing sometimes to turn off the music and just sit with our thoughts. And we don't do that sometimes yeah, because we don't like sure. the silence. We don't like being by ourselves. We don't like being in our thoughts. We yeah. struggle with that. I think for sure. My friends used to make fun of me cause I would literally go on like hour long drives with nothing. Like oh really? No music, I forgot no about that. Yeah, that you would, that I've started you. listening to a little bit more podcasts. Sure, but people always think it's super weird that I like don't listen to music. Just or in the quiet, like what do you do? I'm like, I drive. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. I and didn't I know think, I was doing it. Look wrong. at the birds and yeah, the trees just look and the birds, and, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Something else that I do. So I listen to all my podcasts on one and a half times speed. Oh my gosh. Um, do you not do that? To I don't. Podcasts, I don't. Even. I just don't like. It feels too quick. Okay. To me. I feel like I I learned this in med school because people would listen to lectures on like one and a half, two times, even three times speed. If you're like, I just need to get the content. I don't need to yeah. experience in the moment. But so I listen to most of my podcasts on one and a half times speed because I think my like I think your brain can keep up. It, and you can accomplish more as far as sure. <laughs> being an achiever. If um, it's just for like the content. But something else that I do, and I know that you'll think that this is crazy, but I'll watch TV on one and a half times speed sometimes. <laughs> I mean, that's just... <laughs> Because no, listen. I thought we were having a good conversation. I was like, so this far. Is going so well. Maybe I, I'll do this again. I that literally here's the thing destroys me no, deep no, no. in my soul. I'm a filmmaker, <laughs> and I know how long it takes to like craft an episode or a sure. show or something. And like that is not how it was meant to be listened or watched. I think that I can experience the plot line That's and the emotions. You know, I'm I might not when I'm watching a show that I would normally maybe cry to. I'm not going to cry on one and a half times speed because I'm not quite as much in the moment. But as far as like if I'm watching an hour long show and I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch this show and then I'm going to get some work done. Like if I'm trying to be productive, oh that there's a way. You're Anyways. just talking about being present. That does, does not know. sound like being present. I, I agree. So I agree. I so, guess we'll always just disagree on that. So I'm just going to pause this episode real quick. Um, I hope you're enjoying it so far. I hope you're not listening to it at 1.5 speed because that is just absolutely wrong. Um, but if you are enjoying this, I'd love for you to share it with a friend and, uh, unsubscribe from our YouTube unsubs- unfollow from Instagram, all that stuff, because you should not be on your phone as much as you are. All right. Just kidding. But back to the episode, uh, something else I'm working on is that I try to be really mindful about when I pull out my phone, when I'm walking, 
Okay. I, I don't know if you, you experienced this, but I think particularly in the hospital and maybe like in school or in college, you get this like, when I first got a smartphone, it felt like a game changer for me. Like I could get so much done as far as like, I could send and read so many emails walking between classes 10 minutes away. Yeah. Um, but then you figure, you f- you develop this point where you're like, I don't actually have any emails to check. I don't actually have any things to do right now, but I'm just on my phone because I'm used to being on my phone when I'm walking. Mm-hmm. And then you miss out on all of the faces and the, the stories of the people that are around you. And I've really been working on, you know, if I don't have a specific email that I'm responding to or checking that I'm trying to be really productive right now while I walk, I'm not going to just scroll on Instagram while I'm walking through the hospital because yeah. I want to be, you know, the kind of person that when people see Dr. Brown walking through the hospital, that they know that, that he'll look them in the eye and, and know many of them by name and be able to, to interact and engage with people. And I think about too, when I was in med school, there was a doctor that I had shadowed once that in between every patient he would see in the doctor's office, he would get on Facebook. And there was something that felt so lonely about that life to me. Yeah. Um, and almost a little sad of like, I know that when I think about my life, I don't want to be the kind of person that is either known for or that is just for me to even know is true of me that while I'm at work in between everything I'm doing, I'm just trying to catch as much Instagram or Facebook time as I possibly can. Yeah. And I definitely am not trying to, you know, in the margins of, of my day as, um, as a husband, as a friend, as hopefully a future father someday, I don't want to be the guy that's always on my phone. And mm-hmm. I think about what kind of person I want to be. And I think that that really motivates and inspires me to try to think about creative ways that I can reduce my screen time. Yeah, totally. On another note, um, I was talking to my wife about this yesterday because she knew I was doing this podcast and she was telling me about this idea and maybe she got it from a podcast. I don't know who to give credit to, but a lot of times we pull out our phones as like a source of distraction Mm -hmm. when we're either frustrated by something Mm. or when we're bored by something. Totally. And I feel like when you're frustrated by something, it's because it's actually something that you're passionate about, like you're Mm. working on something and you're like not getting it. Hmm. And instead of like pushing through, you're like, I just need a break. I'm like frustrated. Yeah. And then in the same vein, like if you're bored with something, that's usually something that you're just like not super interested in. Hmm. And instead of like sitting through that and waiting a minute and being like, okay, why am I not interested in this? Like, should I be doing something else with my life? Should I be like pivoting to something else? You're just like immediately just like, distracting yourself yeah. with some Instagram. Yesterday I was taking the third part of my medical licensing exam. And yeah. the way that it was set up was that I was allowed to have my phone during the breaks in the test kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But I was trying to, I was sitting outside eating my peanut butter and jelly sandwich as I was about to do the second half of my test. On wheat and, or white bread? Uh, it was on wheat bread. Okay. Yeah. It had all the wood chips yeah, and like the, the grains in terrible. it. All right, continue. So I'm eating my sandwich and I think to myself, my phone's right here in my lunchbox. I could pull it out and turn it back on because it was at the at a test and it had to be turned off. Mm -hmm. I could turn it on and I could either scroll, I could check my emails, I could check my texts, but then I, I don't think that I would have gone back into the test quite as rested. Yeah. I I wouldn't have gone back into the test with my mind still focused on the test. I would be like, I'm bored of taking this test. I'm going to scroll on my Instagram for a little bit. And I think that it might've negatively impacted my score and it definitely would have made me feel less rested. I was able to truly, I was sitting on the back on my trunk of my car and I was like, the sky is so blue today. Man, you're really into blue skies I, I re- lately. I think that, it's that really warm cool. weather affects my mood. Oh, for sure. And I think that like, you know, when you travel to another country and you see everything with fresh eyes for sure, yeah. and like, um, and you're like, oh my, this is like, Mexico's amazing. Mm-hmm. But like there, I was sitting in a parking lot yeah. in a part of Cleveland that I'd never been in before. Mm-hmm. And that when you are willing to put away the phone, you can see things with fresh eyes and hear things with fresh ears. And you can open your eyes to the world around you and see more when you reduce screen time. For sure. I think I'm going to start just sending you pictures of all the blue skies that I see. That would be on. great. I'll actually do that. That sounds good. And you should send some back to me. I appreciate. Our messages are just going to be blue skies. I appreciate blue skies. Yeah, me too now. Me too. (laughs) No, I think this was good. This was a great conversation. And I think it, like you said, it's not about productivity. It's not about trying to like be on for like less than an hour a day. Mm -hmm. It's just about like living life and appreciating it and being connected to the people that you care about. Totally. A screen can never replace a face. It's great having you here. Thanks, Logan. For life coaching, consulting services, or to hire a keynote speaker, please visit dmbcoaching.com.